Today I'm going to talk about starting this motif in both directions. The particular difficulty comes with starting this 9 pin edge that we've got on here and the trail at the same time. The design is pattern 11 of the Bedfordshire Lace Design Book and all motifs that are started in both direction will be started in a similar manner so it does apply to any variation really of 9 pin edge attaching to an outside trail but purely for motifs where you have to start it in both directions. To start the motif we're going to start at the middle pico on either side of these it doesn't matter which one and we're going to do a false pico. The little bars marked are cucumbers and we have to start with the false pico, lie an extra two pairs in for the plait and work it as far as the pinhole here then we have to start the trail so we can do the cucumber between the trail and the 9 pin edge. So we start by putting a pin in, in the pinhole you've chosen and adding two pairs onto that in open formation a stride, rainbow fashion and then we put five twists on one of the pairs. It doesn't matter which one as long as it's just on one of the pairs this will form the pico around the pin and then we do a cloth stitch. We're now going to lie two pairs, one in each direction, for the plait. And I usually just put a temporary pin in just to push it up in the direction it's going, just to help with the positioning. And keep, try to keep your bobbins the same length, although at this stage they do move around a little. And just hang those on the inside of that support pin. Now these will move around if you don't secure them. So what I do is secure one of the ends. And I have a little gadget here which some wood turners are now starting to make again and put those across. Or you could put a pin through the ends of your spangles. Anything to secure those bobbins that you're not going to be working with. And at this point it's one of the few times you can legally move your pillow. So you go, I'm going to work on the left hand side first before moving to the right hand side. So I just start the plait and tension it up. Once you've got it started that pin is then superfluous and you can take it out and I'll use it for the pico in a moment. I'm doing a left hand pico on the left side in a normal manner and on the outside around in the pinhole and take the second pin round leaving the first one loose in the same direction and then just continue to the next pinhole. Now I will put a temporary support pin in or a pin in at this stage because at this stage I will work the cucumber once I've got the trail worked. I'll then turn it and do the same the other side so that I've got both sides to the cucumbers. And I've just put the bar in across the threads the same just to secure them and do the flat. and then do the pico. This time it's a right hand pico on the outside of the, the thread underneath towards you and round. Put the pin in and take the second thread round. And again once I get to the pin, put another pin in. Now a cucumber is a short tally, it is worked so it's a little rectangle filling this space and it is worked with the worker from one of the sides, it doesn't matter which side you do it from, whether it be from the plait or the worker from the, the trail. Now I'll turn the pillow back just for a moment, you do get a little dizzy doing this sometimes and I'm going to start the trail right in the middle 
between the two um, cucumbers. And I'll start it by hanging the two pairs over the pin I've just put in, putting two twists on because it's imitating it going around the pin. And then I'm going to hang the pairs in for the passes for the trail. Just hang those on a temporary support bin. Just a little way off. And you need three pairs to be going in each direction. So you're actually adding six pairs at this point to form the three pairs of passives. Now again, I'm going to use the, the bar that I used to secure them so that I can continue to work without them jumping around too much. So I've now got the six pairs and it gives me three on each, dire each direction. And again, I'll move the bar. Just zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. I'm turning the pillow again, I'm going to work on the left hand side first and I'm going to put that bar across the threads which will stop the bobbins moving up. And I've also caught in the pair that are from the pin because they're going to be the workers for the right hand side. So I've cross stitched through, I'd already put two twists on and I need now to look at the pattern. Now starting a pattern like this, you do have to watch where you're going. And as you can see, I've come off this pin. I'm going to the pin there, which has a line coming out from it. So I also need to add two pairs for that plait before I put the pin in. So again, I can hang those on that temporary support pin. It's already there. And just work through one of the pairs. This means once you've put the twists on, that pair, two pairs you've added in for the plait will be suspended over the new pin in the trail and be completely secure. Those two are now left out for that plait. And then work back through the next pin. again and again there is another flat coming out so all of these you're adding in as you start the work you must watch the pattern to see where the pairs are needed very often it's easy to miss them when you're at this stage you're focusing so much on watching for the cucumber that you miss them again cloth stitch through one pair only two twists on and pin up. By doing it this way also, it, as well as not pulling on the trail and securing the pairs you've added in nicely, it also reduces the bulk of the join, so it's less noticeable that you've added them in when you come to take pins out at the end. Now you'll see now, I'm now at the cucumber and I've got to decide which way I want to go. Now generally, I would probably work with the weaver for the cucumber from the plait. A few reasons for this. I want to be able to secure, once I've done the cucumber, as much as possible before I work with the weaver. And by doing this, you do get a lot of stitches. You've got three picots and you can work the whole of that plait before you need to touch the weaver, which might pull it in. So I'll lengthen the third one. And I weave it just as you would a normal tally but this time I'm not going to do it square, I'm doing it rectangular. So you only need something like seven or nine weavings at the most to get this nice square. 
count the number that you do and all the way around use the same number because this does make a big difference particularly with it being on the edge um that's seven let's try nine see what nine looks like that will give you a slightly heavier edge i think that for this piece would work well so i'll put the twists on and i put the twists on the left hand side the worker i'm leaving long as i have done with all the tallies so that it reminds me not to pull on it and again if you want you can secure the, the bottom with a pin just so that you don't pull on it i don't think you can quite see it there i've just put a pin through the bottom spangle so it doesn't pull but do watch you don't put a pin through your pattern when you do this otherwise you end up with a pinhole and you can't work out where it's come from and then you continue and as I say you get all these picots done this really does secure that cucumber then after you've done this side you can continue there now on this pattern there's quite a lot to be added in and I would work quite a distance before I started the middle I would probably work down as far as this on the left hand side and similar on the right before I started the daisy just so that you've got the first two or three petals that you can actually complete without having to go back to the edge don't go too far because you will block yourself in but certainly as far as the first two Fisher buds I hope that's helped you any other nine pin edge you can start in a similar manner start with the plaits and picots and start the trail and then start the joining in hope that's helped if it has give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and i hope to see you again soon thanks for watching